Welcome to our blockchain demo. The CA incubation team conducted a hackathon where they showed how to move transactional data from existing systems into a shadow blockchain. So let's jump right in. Okay, thank you. So I will start uh, with a little introduction with a motivational example regarding the shadow blockchain concept. So first of all, let's assume that business of our company is based around um, marble. We are using the marbles demo, so that's why the marbles are chosen as the main asset of our business. And the information about marbles are stored in mainframe database. Uh, we have a nice UI application that uh, allows you to display all of the marbles, create new one, modify and delete them. And that, that uh, UI client is used by our users. So that's the, that's the initial setup. After some time, as the time progressed, uh, other applications uh, became uh, dependent on the Marbles database, on the Marbles system that we built around. It could be tools or applications like SAP. It could be web services layers built on, on top of the Marbles database. So uh, right now we have a system that uh, is based on the client application, but as well, the Marbles became part of the enterprise solution, so uh, the Marbles database actually acts as a data source for other systems as well. Meanwhile, or recently, how we say, the new technology called blockchain emerged. Uh, and it seems to be appealing for us as well, for our Marbles use case, because the blockchain brings uh, a lot of benefits. Just to mention uh, some of them in the context of our Marbles uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, the first uh, attribute that's interesting for us is the immutability of the data which are stored in the blockchain ledger because it increases the security as well as the trust. What's in the ledger is there and it cannot be forged or tampered by anyone, so the data there could be trusted. Other attribute is the de decentralization of the blockchain, so uh, we can create a blockchain network with marbles and our partners can join this network, and we don't need to allow them to access our internal systems. They will simply access the blockchain network and uh, became a part of our Marbles ecosystem and the processes as well. And uh, when speaking about the processes, the third attribute that's interesting for us is the smart contracts, which are the scripts that can automate many of the business processes uh, can perform some actions upon uh, certain conditions and so on. So all of these things are interesting for us, for the marbles, but we cannot turn off our original system right now because uh, there are users who are using it and there are the other systems that are dependent on that. So <clears throat> we would like to we would like to use the marbles in the blockchain, but we cannot simply turn off our original system. In addition, uh, we would like to do some proof of concepts with a blockchain uh, setup. So we would like to use the same Marbles data we have in our production, but we would like to use them in the proof of concept testing environment as well, without the need to, you know, uh, copy some data to the blockchain and so on. We would like to have some kind of data or transaction synchronization between our original environment running on the mainframe and uh, blockchain. So uh, this concept we call Shadow Blockchain, and uh, Srinivas will now guide you through the live demo of this uh, concept. Thanks, Peter. So um, this is the G Marbles application, which is running on GOS system, and this is having uh, five basic functionalities like uh, um, show show the marbles and select the marble, insert the marble, update and delete the marbles. So um, show marbles will show how many number of marbles are present in the database. Right now there are seven marbles present and um, if you give number of marbles you wanted to see it will print um, it will bring all the marbles uh, on the screen. Same way, you can select the marble 
using the marble ID and it will show the selected marble on the screen and same way you can insert a new marble into the database and update the marble based on the marble ID and the marble owner and delete the marble ID based on marble ID. And this is running on GOS um, legacy system and we have another marble application which is running on GLinux. And here um, we have some marbles um, shown on the screen along with the owner's name and here if you see there are totally seven marbles um, in this application. We have done the synchronization between the DB2 database and also the web application. So that's why you are able to see these seven marbles in the same seven marbles in the DB2 database. Here in this application, we can add new marble, update um, the existing marble, and also delete the uh, delete the marbles as well. So I will try to create a new marble um, under the ownership of Amy. I'm creating, um, choosing the color green, and I'm selecting the size as small, and I'm creating a new marble. Now a new block will be created which will appear here because it is running on the Zlinex test environment. You'll see a little bit slow here. Yeah, it is the new marble created. And if you see the database, you are able to see the new marble present in this database as well. So there are eight marbles in the database right now. And if you see the this is the new green marble I have created. If I wanted to um, update the ownership of this marble from Amy to Eva, I can just move this marble to Eva. And a new block is already created. And if you see um, the owner of this um, Eva it is changed actually. Um, previously the owner um, ends with the SGTWS and then um, new owner is 10Q70. If you see in the database as well, so the new marble is having the new owner. Same way I can delete this marble. Yes, the marble is deleted now. And if you see in the database, there will be only seven marbles. And the green marble is deleted. Same way, I can create marbles and update the owner of the marble and delete the marbles from the Gmarble application as well. And the transactions, whatever I am doing from Gmarble's application also um, will reflect on the hyperledger. So I wanted to create a new marble now. Yes. And just I am giving um, a name Javaji here. And it is a the blue marble I am going to create with size 28 and with the same owner and the company name as United Marbles. So new marble is inserted now and there should be 8 marbles in the database. This is the new marble with blue. So new block is created here and the blue marble appears under the ownership of Alice. Now I will update the owner from Alice to Eva. So just I will take 
So marble is updated now. Now this blue marble will move from Alice to Eva. Yes. Same way I can delete this marble from this G marble application. Yes, this is the marble. or delete insert these marbles from Z marble application as well as the web based marbles application. And all the data will be synchronized and this data will be updated in the DB2 database. And the hyperledger will be updated with the, all the transactions you are doing either from the Z marble application or the marble application as well. So this is the proof of concept for shadow blockchain. Now Peter will um, conclude this presentation. Peter, you can take over. Okay, thank you, Shriniva. Thank you for the demo. So uh, let's back to the to the wrap up of our of our shadow blockchain proof of concept uh, demo and presentation. Just to summarize uh, what what has been done within this proof of concept, so the whole architecture is based on the centralized application that is written in Java. This application is connected to DB2 and to the Hyperledger fabric and actually updates the other side upon the event of the transaction on the on the other side. Uh, we are using a common uh, interfaces how to access the database as well as the ledger. So we are using JDBC to access the database and Fabric Java SDK to access the Fabric ledger. So uh, this means that uh, the synchronizer application could use any other database that's providing JDBC interface, which is all of the current database, uh, database products, and as well as it could run and against any other Fabric network. Uh, all of this is uh, packed into the Docker image, so it could run as a Docker container. So besides that, it's written in Java, and it could run anywhere where Java is running. It could run in any environment where Docker is running as a container. So uh, we support this uh, kind of easy deployment and setup approach. And uh, in addition, we have implemented two modes. We started with Synchronous where the database readers and writers are always waiting for the ledger readers and writers, so everything is uh, in some sequential loop. And in addition, we provided a synchronous mode, which is multi threaded way of the walking of the readers and writers, so they are walking independently to each other, so this can speed up uh, the performance. Uh, as a part of this proof of concept, the DB2 client in Rex has been created for Marbles that's showcasing the, let's say, original solution we would like to integrate with the blockchain. 
Uh, there are uh, two public references uh, talking about the blockchain and uh, the shadow blockchain approach. One of them is from the Royal Bank of Canada, which is experimenting with the shadow blockchain uh, approach. And uh, the point is that actually they, they, they see that the blockchain could be the disruptive technology, the technology of the uh, next 10 years, and they would like to integrate it with their current solution. So that's exactly the motivation behind the shadow blockchain. The same, uh, on the same note, uh, Jerry Kiyomo from IBM is referring to the shadow blockchain as something that could uh, leverage the blockchain without uh, replacing the original business environment, the original processes. So the blockchain could augment or enrich the original setup that's, uh, that's in the organization. And at the end, uh, just to speak a little bit about the follow-up work, about the future of this concept. Uh, uh, the first thing is that actually it could be enhanced in the way that uh, the shadow blockchain will use the transaction references. So the data in the ledger will contain the references to the original data stored in the database, and this will avoid the data duplication or the data redundancy. The data will stay in the database blockchain will just reference them. Uh, data validation could be applied into the synchronizer as well as a part of the, of the synchronization process in the, in the situation where the data validation needs to be ensured because uh, in the blockchain can appear some data that will be not well formed for the database or with the values that are not accepted by the database. So data validation step could be applied as well. Uh, we would like to test everything on the Linux and ZOS, so the whole deployment, including the synchronizer and the ledger and the marble spin run on the mainframe, and definitely some kind of performance benchmarking for performance analysis needs to be done to be able to make some assessment about the production readiness of the solution, because we can expect that the Updates on the database will be high frequency, high volume type of updates, and uh, we need to assess if the ledger is able to consume such uh, number of data within a short period of time. And if this could be a bottleneck, we would need to find out some queues or buffers within the synchronization that could help to uh, somehow batch process the load from the database towards to the ledger. Some uh, discoveries we made. Uh, that's, uh, we found out some uh, DB2 interfaces that might be useful for other applications, like the JDBC, RESTful, HTTP API, and Node.js module for the JavaScript applications. Uh, we found out that there are some you know, lack in the capabilities of the current 1.0 version of the Java SDK of Hyperledger of Fabric. Some events were not generated but everything is uh, on track and the new version should support it. And the uh, last, uh, some kind of side project or spin up, spin off work that could be done is the auto generation of the API stops or entities from the chain code because the chain code functions defines how the model object looks like in our case, the marbles. So some scanner of the chain code could be applied to generate from the chain code definition the high-level objects in uh, Java or JavaScript so the developers doesn't need to write everything from scratch, but they can, they can generate the data model from the chain code model which contains such kind of data model definition. So that's it from our shadow blockchain POC demo.